Hello, my precious friends. I really hope that you are doing great. Welcome to our today's class. It is our second lesson on the seventh topic of Form 3 work, which is called Electrostatics 2. As usual, let me comment by giving you the quote of the day, which states that optimism is the best way to see life. We shall discuss that quote at the end of our class today. So today we are looking at charge distribution on the surface of a conductor. Then you are saying that charge distribution on a conductor depends on the shape of that particular conductor. So we shall see that uh, for sharp uh, shapes, the charge distribution is usually very, very high or the concentration of charges at sharp points, it is always very, very high. Now, the quantity of charge per unit area on the surface of a conductor is called the charge density. So if you want to compute for the charge density on a given conductor, you simply take the amount or the number you count the number of charges on that particular conductor then you divide by the area of that particular conductor for example assuming that the amount of charge on a given conductor is 20 coulomb then the area of that particular conductor is 2 square meter then the charge density in that particular case you just take the quantity of charge then you divide remember par means division so you take the quantity of charge then you divide it by you divide it by the area of uh, that is of that particular uh, conductor so we simply take the quantity of charge which in which in this case is 20 coulomb then you divide by the area of that particular conductor which you are taking as to be 2 uh, square meter so the charge density in that case will be 10 coulomb per square meter 10 coulomb per square meter so if you want to find the charge density, you simply take the quantity of charge, then you divide by the area of that particular conductor. Just like in geography, when you talk of uh, population density, you just take the amount of people in that particular area, then you divide by the area of that particular region. Then a proof plane, usually just a small metallic disc with an insulating handle, is usually used to um, obtain the amount of charge that is distributed on a particular conductor. So a proof plane uh, and an electroscope can be used to investigate the charge distribution on a conductor. So a proof plane is, is usually touched at a given point on a conductor and then it is transferred to the electroscope. Then of course you observe the leaf divergence. So the, the work of the proof plane is just to take the charges. For example, this is our insulating handle, then this is our proof plane. You just take the proof plane on a, a, a particular area of a conductor so that what it will do, it, it will transfer the charges uh, from the conductor to that particular uh, proof plane. Then you carry the proof plane using the insulating handle. You transfer it to the uh, brass cup of an electroscope. Then, of course, if there are charges at that particular proof plane, we expect the divergence on the leaf of the electroscope to increase. But if there are fewer charges, we expect the divergence of uh, the leaf to be very, very small. So you simply use your proof plane, you touch it on that particular conductor or on the uh, that particular area of the conductor, then you transfer the proof plane on the brass cap of an electroscope. After that, you observe the leaf divergence. So the proof plane is touched at a given point on a conductor and then transferred to the electroscope. So the leaf divergence is noted. Then... For a spherical conductor, the charges are distributed uniformly on the surface of that particular conductor. So this is our spherical conductor. Remember, a spherical conductor simply means that uh, the conductor is actually circular. The only difference between a circle and a sphere is that a circle is usually in uh, two dimensions, but a sphere is usually in three dimensions. What we mean by three dimensions is that there are some materials uh, in between this particular circular shape. But actually, when you just talk of a circle alone, it means that you are only talking of the outer part, but there are no materials in between that particular uh, shape. But when you talk of a sphere, it means that we are assuming there are materials uh, in between this particular circle. For example, if it is um, a spherical ball, there is, there is usually air in between that particular uh, circular shape. So whenever you have a spherical conductor, we expect the charges to be distributed uniformly or equally yeah uniformly on that particular surface so maybe in an exam scenario you just be uh, given maybe the spherical conductor then they'll ask you to indicate the charge distribution on that particular conductor so you expect 
the charges to be distributed equally. Then for a peer-shaped conductor, the charges are more concentrated at the sharp points. Here we had said earlier that charges will always be more concentrated at the sharp points or the charge density will always be high at very sharp points as compared to points which are not sharp. For example, for a peer-shaped, a peer-shaped appears in this particular manner. So one side is usually very sharp. So at the sharp point, the charge distribution will be very high. So the charge density at the sharp points will always be very high. You can see the charges are more at this particular point. But at the areas which are not very sharp, the charges are sparsely distributed or they are far away from each other. So the charges will always be distributed in such a way that at the very sharp points, the charge density will be very, very high. Then uh, for the peer-shaped body, a peer-shaped body discharges faster than a spherical-shaped uh, conductor. So the reason is because of the high charge, uh, that is the high charge concentration at the sharp curvatures, uh, which causes the charge leakage. Remember when the charges are more concentrated at, at a particular area, the probability of those particular charges to leak away will be very, very high, as we shall see in uh, uh, when we'll be looking at the lightning arresters. So the reason why a peer-shaped body discharges faster than a spherical-shaped conductor is because of the high charge concentration at the sharp curvatures, which causes charge leakage. Yeah, you'll be asked to give a reason why it is easier to discharge uh, a peer-shaped body as compared to a spherical uh, conductor or a spherical body. So the reason is because of the high charge concentration at the sharp points or at the sharp curvatures which can lead to high charge leakage. To leak the charges is just to add the charges uh, or to lose those particular charges. And, uh, next, we look at um, a hollow conductor. So a hollow conductor simply means it is actually like a circular conductor. So it is in two dimensions such that we are assuming that there are no materials in between this particular uh, body. That is what we mean by a hollow conductor. So no charges are usually found inside a hollow conductor. All the charges reside on the outer surface. So the charges will always distribute themselves on the outer surface, but no charge will exist in between uh, a hollow conductor. So a hollow conductor simply means there are no materials in between or on the inner part of that particular, um, on, of that particular body. So this is our hollow conductor, which is a positively charged hollow conductor. So the most important thing to notice that for a hollow conductor, in between that particular conductor, there are no charges inside. The charges that are there will usually reside or they will arrange themselves on the outer surface of that particular conductor. So maybe if you come with a, a proof plane, then you uh, put it in between that particular conductor, then you transfer the proof plane on the electroscope. We do not expect any deflection on the leaf of the electroscope. However, if you take a proof plane, then you attach it on the surface of this particular conductor, then you transfer it on the um, brass cap of the electroscope. In that case, we expect the divergence of the electroscope to increase because the charges are found on the uh, outer surface or they reside on the surface. But no charges will be found inside a hollow conductor. So maybe in an exam situation, you'll be given the hollow conductor, then they'll ask you to show how the charges will be distributed. So you just draw the charges in such a way that they reside on the outer surface. Remember, in some cases, it can also be charged negatively. It is not necessarily uh, being charged positively. So you can also charge it negatively. So in that case, you just uh, place the negative charges on the outer surface. So the, mo the most important thing is to know that for a hollow conductor, the charges reside on the surface, but no charge will exist in between that particular conductor. Then the charge distribution on a cuboid, again, is as shown below. So we have said that charges will always be more concentrated at sharp points. So you can see at the vertices of this particular uh, cuboid, actually we have more charges as compared to the areas which are actually flat. So the charge distribution or the charge density will always be very, very high at sharp points. So you can see at all vertices or at sharp points of this particular cuboid, the charge distribution is very, very high. So uh, we've come to the end of our class today, but we need to discuss the quote of the day. 
the quote of the day stated that optimism is the best way to see life. So the quote is encouraging us to look for opportunities in life rather than concentrating on the obstacles. Remember that every situation you encounter in life will always have two sides. That is, one side is the positive side and the other side is the negative side. But it is upon you to choose which side to concentrate on. And remember that whatever you choose to concentrate on will always expand. So if you focus on the negative side, then the negativity will expand. If you also focus on the positive side, then the positive things will also increase. And lastly, recall that optimism is a happiness magnet such that if you stay positive, good things and good people will always be attracted to you. Conversely, if you stay negative, then bad things and bad people will always be attracted to you. So you actually attract who you are. You attract the values that you have. So be very careful with the values that you accept or that you define yourself with. Thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson. I do not take it for granted. In case you are new to the channel, kindly hit the subscription button and also turn on the notification bell so that whenever I upload a new video, you will get notified. If you know any student, any student that you honestly think could benefit from this content, kindly, kindly refer them to Kind Tuition Academy. Thank you for the continued support. I do not take it for granted. Until next time, this is Kind Tuition Academy.